ladies and gentlemen, 49 coming at you another Community Shoutcast for the OUSA Dota League Season 1. Uh, joining me as my co-caster for today will be Ken Killer, captain of Horseman the Ruckus. I think he said he was dashing off to find Gats' cell phone on Hyde Street, so he won't be joining me till a bit later on. But this is a best of three series, it's the first uh, best of three series played so far, and the next stage of the ODL1. So now we've moved on to the double elimination bracket, so uh, we'll be up against Team Blink playing against 2IP. The winner of this bracket will then move on to play, I believe will be the winner of a Struggle and Horseman the Ruckus, or Felfi and Friends, and Bambi, Ro and Bambi Rising and um, TSS, who are also playing in about 10-15 minutes. So it's going to quickly load out of uh, Steam, and so Blink Dota have first pick. It'll be interesting to see who they choose to pick up. Team ben. Most likely we'll be seeing a Slark and Ember. We might actually see Ember Spirit being let through the draft, just because Snow does play Raising a very good Ember Spirit. Ben. So Naga Star in first band coming up from Blink Dota, one of Yoda's better heroes. So it'll be interesting to see how 2IP draft this. 2IP are a team that have a lot of flair, and they go for a lot of unorthodox builds, very similar in that sense to Team Struggle. They like to play around uh, with their Ten heroes, especially with their player roles. The only thing that's set in stone is Yoda usually plays the 5 position and mules the off the uh, mid layer. Clockwork banned out, one of Wolfkind's best heroes. He does like to actually run a Clockwork tri lane with uh, Yoda playing the Rubik. As the rationale behind that is you have to teleconnect the lift into the cogs. And so you uh, throw them out of the cogs to hit 2 or 3 cogs at once. The 160 mana and HP bun at level 1, very significant. Also repositions them far back. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, closer towards your tower and away from theirs. Ember Spirit instantly banned up from 2 IP, so we'll have to deal with the Snow Ember Spirit. And so they're delivering now the second ban, because since uh, Slark and Invoker are, are still in the pool, they don't know if Blink plays Slark, but at the same time they don't really want to take that risk. So they're banning out the Invokers, they don't want to deal with the Snow Exile Invoker. So it looks like they've done their homework, but Blink instantly going with the Lycan Radiant first pick. pick. Lycan, one of Wolfkind's best heroes. I mean, for Christ's sake, the guy's name was Wolfkind. Of course he plays the only Wolf hero in Dota 2. So it'll be interesting to see how 2 IP fare against one of their best heroes. Especially with that Naga Siren ban, indicative of the fact that they want to go for a Lycan, as Naga Siren is one of the best counters to the Lycan throw, just because Ensnare goes through BKB, and Lycan, if you can't lock him in place during Shapeshift, you can bring him down. And so the uh, 5 second uh, mobilize coming up from the Ensnare that goes through BKB and can lock him in place during Shapeshift, a very effective way to counteract the Lycan throw. Five seconds remaining. Will be interesting to see who 2IP choose to go for the first and second pick. They go for Timber Source, so that'll be their offlaner. I Radiant believe will be played by Demon Lord Satan. He's the or actually too easy. They've got uh, the one of their other players that usually is in their roster, uh, Thundercunt. He's currently unavailable, so he's been replaced by the old member of Two IP, Too Easy, who actually have to drop out further on the tournament. So he's been replaced by Demon Lord Satan, but it looks like he's coming back for uh, tonight's series. So most likely will be Too Easy up on that Timber Source, seeing as how he's the usual off lane player. Demon Lord Satan, I believe, probably will be playing that support role then, in a similar fashion that Thundercunt usually does. So he'll be supporting out with Yoda. Wolfkunt will be the tryline farmer, seconds, and Mule will be the mid player. Remaining. Will be interesting to see uh, who wins out in this matchup. Reserve time. Because is a very effective hero, especially against strength heroes such as Lycanthrope, just because the pure damage coming out from all of his abilities helps bring down Lycanthrope, and as Welling Death reducing his primary stat by 15%. So the fact that you can reduce Lycan's strength, which effectively reduces his effective HP pool, effective HP pool means it's a lot easier to bring him down. And since Lycan is a carry hero that usually doesn't build BKB until later on, you usually just go for Naked Boots into the Vladimir's Offering towards Medallion Courage, and then you pick up a Necro 3. And then after that, you might want to pick up a BKB. Yes, because the majority of your damage actually comes out from your minions as opposed to your hero itself, especially with the fact that you have Feral Impulse, which propagates to all your minions, as well as the Hell. Dire team pick. Dazzle picked up by 2IP, one of their better support heroes, I think. Yoda will be the one playing him. Very powerful hero, has been seeing a lot of action in the competitive scene as well as in the ODR1. Just because of the fact that he has that amazing defensive capability with the Shallow Grave, as well as the fact that he also provides a huge amount of offensive capability with both the Poison Touch as well as the Weave. Weave actually removes a significant amount of armor at all levels. I believe at level 1 it, re it reduces up to 18 armor, and that only further uh, increases. Blink Dota going bang. with uh, one of their best offlane heroes, the Nature's Prophet being played by. Uh, Z, who I think in this game has been going by, yeah, he's been, he's, which is to Z here. And so he'll be playing that nature's uh, prophet. And very surprising note that Blink Dota actually have banned out the Ancient Apparition. This is the hero that they have made famous in the ODL1, just because Yoshi always picks him up and use, runs him as a tri lane support with that maxed out chilling touch, especially with the fact that you have a Lycanthrope who also has Hell. Ten a lot of extra damage to provide to you 
a team edge, but I guess Yoshi's gotten sick of playing the Ancient Apparition, so Snow has finally decided to. It looks like he'll probably be playing that Visage unless it's banned out. Templar Assassin banned out to respect ban to Mule, who plays an absolutely fantastic Templar Assassin. Yoda also plays a very good Templar Assassin as well, but I think uh, Mule's been become the dedicated mid laner for 2IP. Vengeful Spirit banned out, incredibly powerful here, especially in conjunction with the Lycanthrow. As you've got the Vengeance Aura, which uh, increases the pushing capability coming out from Lycan, as well as the fact that you've got the Hell of Terror, which reduces armor Five and the swap, which remaining. enables uh, Lycan to get up close and beat people down. The reason why uh, Vengeful Spirit works especially well with heroes such as Lycan is since he's a Death Ball uh, push hero that picks up momentum very Radiant quickly and takes all your towers, having the uh, Vengeful Spirit Aura on top of that is too much to bear, so you really want to help mitigate those factors. Uh, would be interesting to see if Blink Dota or other or if any other team actually experiments with maybe the Beastmaster pickup. I know a Troll Warlord also used to be considered for that, but he's been fallen into favor with his huge nerfs over to his Welling Axis and now uses his cast points there being instant. Very significant as well as the fact that Shadow Blade has been nerfed. So a Troll Warlord has fallen out of the competitive scene. Ten seconds but Beastmaster has been uh, buffed quite significantly in the last few patches is uh, summon ability uh, now has been split into two sub abilities. So one summons is Hawk and one summons is Boar. Can mean that if you uh, time your summons time. properly, you actually can have two balls out in the field at once. The boar is quite uh, significant, it provides essentially a free out of Iascardi, and if you can micro it, you use it to lock people in place. But the main reason why you pick up the Beast Master in this kind of lineup is the fact that you've got the 40% attack speed coming out from the attack speed aura that Beast Master has. So, considering the fact that Lycan Throat, when he uses Shape Shift, has a reduced attack point, as well as the fact that his Wolves and Perfect Team have a very low cast point. And the fact that Beastmaster usually built a Necro through himself. Huge amount of Death Ball push power coming out from that. Will be interesting to see if they decide to pick him up. The issue with uh, Beastmaster as a mid hero is Puck essentially does everything he does a lot better. Since Beastmaster can lock down one hero with the uh, Roar, whereas Puck can pretty much lock down the entire team with the Dream Coil. And so Puck has a lot more utility and mobility, which are two pri primary assets for a mid hero. And so it looks like they've also banned remaining. out the Crystal Maiden, so preventing any of the uh, enabler heroes that have Blink Dota could pick up to those supports. Remaining. Crystal Maiden, incredibly powerful offensive support hero. She's often drafted and used very defensively, which I very Radiant highly disagree with. That's because of the fact that uh, uh, Frost Nova has a huge uh, range and massive AoE, so it can uh, help set up another support hero with a lower uh, cast range on their abilities, such as the Vengeful Spirit or the Ogre Magi, who have very low ranges on their stuns to be able to get in position. So Sand King picked up by 2 IP. They've run this combination before, Dazzle and the Sand King. You've got the Poison Touch to give Sand King enough space and time to run up and follow up the Bar Strike. Chaos Knight Dark actually drafted pick. by 2 IP. They're a very strange team in the sense that Wolf Cunt, he has a 0% win rate on any agility carries, but with strength carries he seems to do very well. And so you usually see something like the Chaos Knight uh, picked up on him. Life Stealer, or oh, the Lycanthrope, also one of some of his best heroes. So Chaos Knight provides a huge amount of uh, mid-game presence and early game, especially with the fact that his uh, stun has been buffed in the last few patches, so it's now inversely relational to the amount of damage it does. So if you get Ten seconds a 4 second stun, it'll do very little damage, but at the same time, if you get a very low uh, duration stun, you'll get a huge Five amount of damage. Remaining. Significant buff, as the issue with Chaos Knight, especially since uh, once his Chaos Bolt was uh, properly patched Reserve out, time. it was bugged early, so it traveled a lot faster than it should have. Is the fact that usually it's completely reliant on RNG. If you get a very low duration stun, that means that before you wouldn't get that much damage as well. So it's essentially a wasted skill point. Whereas now, if you uh, get a low team duration man. stun, you'll at least get a huge amount of burst damage coming off from his Chaos Bolt. Actually, does hit fairly hard, zero to two hundred at the first two levels, and I think it goes up to zero to three hundred later on. Yeah, zero to two hundred. And 75, so I actually can do, I'll put a fair amount of damage. Uh, Blink Dota pick up Chen, so it looks like Yoshi will be showing off his uh, micro skills over on that Chen. Blink Dota, Five especially with the fact that they've got a very powerful uh, pushing uh, lineup from the look of it, all their heroes so far can contribute to the push. But the Lycan Throw, Nature's Prophet, these two on their own, if you pick up one or the other, already provide a huge amount of split pushing presence. But with the fact that you have a Shadow Shaman and uh, the Chen being played by Yoshi, with DDY over and the Shadow Shaman, 2 IP have got to be a little bit scared. They need to start picking up heroes that can clear out waves. Since, I guess, Tempestor, once he hits level 6, he can throw this tracker and walk up to the wave and then use Welling Death to clear up. Creep waves. Dazzle has a Shadow Wood, which you probably will be looking to max out this game, just because they are going to be up against a huge amount of push. And Sand King, with the Caustic man. Finale as well as the Sandstorm, can provide a fair amount of anti-pushing capability, but Chaos Knight, he can't do anything, he can just beat creeps down one by one. So they've gone for the fifth bound of Death Prophet, very good bound coming out from 2IP. That's because if you also give them Death Prophet on top of all of this, that's too much push to bear. So it'll be interesting to see who they choose for their mid laner. Puck would be a very good pickup. 
but looks like no blink doesn't have actually bounding it out. So fairing Mule's puck. Pick. He actually played out of his mind in game number two of this series up against Horseman of the Ruckus. Actually ensured that 2IP were able to move on to the next stage. As uh, he was able to pick up an 11 minute blink dagger playing up against King Killer's Death Prophet, one of his better heroes, was able to utilize the phase shift to dodge all the crypt swarms. Did feed, uh, I believe he fed first blood to King Killer, who was able to uh, outplay him in the mid lane, utilizing out uh, a double damage rune to force him to juke out the attack and then throw out the crypt swarm to finish him off. For 2 IP, they haven't picked up their mid lane hero yet, so it'll be interesting to see who they choose to go for. I believe Five in the 1v1 matchup of Nature's Prophet up against Timbersaw, Timbersaw actually does have a pretty good advantage just because of the fact that Reactive Armor mitigates a lot of the harassment time. coming up from him on Nature's Prophet's right clicks. But at the same time, Nature's Prophet does right click substantially harder than the Timbersaw, and so he, if he plays it, his cards right, he can actually deny and Ten slowly harass the Timbersaw out of lane. However, with that Reactive Armor, it's very difficult to bully Timbersaw out of lane. Five seconds but Z is a very safe off laner. Goes for the Admiral Bulldog Nature's Prophet build. And it looks like 2IP are going for the Dark Queen of Pain. Pick. Very interesting hero to pick up. Especially considering the fact that Puck completely outclassed the Queen of Pain. Especially with the fact that her Shadow Strike has been significantly nerfed. With the increased mana cost. As well as the rising prevalence of mid heroes such as the Viper. We might actually see Blink Dota pick up Viper just because he completely hard counters the Queen of Pain. If uh, Queen of Pain at level 1 goes for Shadow Strike and Viper at level 1 skills up the uh, Corrosive Skin, Queen of Pain throws out the Shadow Strike on the Viper, she'll actually take more damage from Ten the Corrosive Skin than she'll deal out with the uh, Shadow Strike. And that's including if she also throws in right clicks Five as well. Just because uh, Corrosive Skin now works on both heroes' abilities as well as right click damage. As well as the fact that Viper uh, with his. With the fact that he has a free orb built in and a nether toxin can easily harass and cripple Queen of Pain in lane. So it'll be very interesting to see how they choose to deal with this. However, Queen of Pain has been significantly buffed in the latest patch. Aghanim Scepter upgrade not only increases damage for her Sonic Wave, but also reduces the cooldown at all levels to, four, to 40 seconds. And so against this huge push lineup coming up from Blink Dota, I wouldn't be surprised if Mule actually rushes Ags as a first item instead of the Orchid of Malevolence or the BKB, which we usually see. Just because it gives them a great way to be able to control the yeah, creep push coming out from Blink Dota. As all the creeps push up, you throw out one Sonic Wave, you say thanks for all the gold, you pick up your other items, and you go on that ganking path. Queen of Pain provides a massive amount of uh, burst AoE damage. In that sense, she's kind of like a cruise missile. Just throw it at the enemy team, and pray to god you blow up whatever the hell they point at you. Because otherwise, outside of the sheer amount of damage provided, she has very little uh, utility. She doesn't have the lockdown that Puck has with the waning rip to provide that silence, as well as the Dream Call to lock people in place. All she really provides is damage. And so that, that's where she starts to taper off. However, the, the advantage of Queen of Pain over the Puck, I suppose, is the fact that she actually does scale a bit better into the later stages of the game, just because if she gets enough gold, and if she picks up an early Aghanim Scepter to use it to clear out Creep Wave, she very easily can. She can transition into a semi-carry, just because she's got excellent agility growth. I believe she's got something like 2.1 agility growth per level. And so she right-clicks fairly hard, she's got 600 range, and that blink enables her to constantly disengage and re-engage as well to pick people off. So Queen of Pain, if given sufficient space to Ten farm, seconds remaining. can function as a, a very strong late game hero. And it looks like they've gone for the Mirana pickup. And so it could be actually be a Mirana mid played by Snow. Yeah, it looks like a Mirana mid, so Flash, uh, their safe lane farmer, gonna be on that Lycanthrope. Zeki, their off laner, over in the Nature's Prophet. DDY, Shadow Shaman, so pretty standard uh, heroes picked up by all of them. Yoshi will be playing that Chen, so I don't think I've seen Snow uh, play Chen before, or play an East or the Micro hero. I guess I've seen him play Invoker. Uh, Quas X on Invoker, but that's about it. So it looks like Yoda's actually going to be playing that Timber Saw, so he's going to be the off laner. Demon Lord Satan, their latest addition to uh, 2IP, going to be on that support dazzle. Too easy, usually the off lane player. I guess he's been demoted ever since he left the team and had to drop out the tourney. Playing that Sand King. Wolf Gun up on the Chaos Knight, we'll see how he does. Uh, Mule over on the Queen of Pain. So yeah, it looks like Snow's going to be on that Mirana. So Mirana against Queen of Pain, a 1v1 matchup. I'd have to give that advantage over to the Queen of Pain. Just because Mirana's biggest weakness as a mid hero is the fact she's got very low base damage. Their attack animation is fairly average. It's great for harassing. It's 0.5 attack points. So you can throw out the attack, move yourself, and throw another attack. A very easy animation for you to run people Prepare down and constantly battle. harass the right clicks. But in terms of CSing, Queen of Pain uh, does beat her. I think the projectile speeds are similar. But the fact that Queen of Pain has a much higher base attack point as well as the fact that you've got Blink to be able to uh, get runes, although at the same time, you've got Leap and Arrow to be able to scare her off. So it should be an interesting matchup. I guess it really does boil down to uh, how effective Snow is as a player compared to more so than the hero matchup, just because in the vacuum, Co-op should easily beat the Mirana, but if Mirana can land that arrow similar to uh, Pudge in any mid matchup, it really all depends on how effective you are being able to land that skill shot. So Flash over in the top lane, over in the Lycan throw with DDY supporting him. So it looks like if they do decide to clash Tri-V Tri, just because you've, you've got their defensive Chen jungling, yeah, it looks like they're going to clash Tri-V Tri. I would have to give that advantage to 2IP. 
Because you have to shell a grave from uh, Dazzle, which is, provides you a huge amount of offensive and defensive capability in any trial situation. The reason why it provides offensive capability is the fact that if you know you're going to die anyway, you could just stand on your ground and fight for those last five seconds. So even if you just throw out right clicks for the last five seconds, you actually can output a fair amount of DPS. Too easy. Uh, never mind. Yoda over on the Timbersaw. He's going to be in the safe lane, so he'll be having a ball of the time up against Z. Over in the Dangerous Prophet. You see some wards already placed very early on, so that's going to give him a lot of vision. So you've got an uh, excellent defensive ward over here, which provides a vision to all gangs. jungle all entries. So Nature's Prophet won't be called out by ganks, as well as providing rune vision. And that safety ward you have placed over there. So placed a bit behind enemy lines, just to make it a bit less likely for them to be the de it. since usually they've got the pub ward over here, which is very easily de just because it's such an obvious uh, rune ward spot. And you also have one over here, or over there. And so those are also fairly standard. Uh, warning spots. Looks like Mule actually won the uh, creep pool over in the mid lane, so he's going to be having a ball of a time. Skilling that Shadow Strike at level 1. The thing you have to keep in mind Shadow Strike is because it has such a long cast point and slow uh, projectile speed, it is actually fairly difficult to get off against uh, other ranged heroes because they can back away. It's not already eats a uh, level 1 Shadow Strike to the face, and the right clicks come out from it. That's the reason why Queen of Pain is such an excellent 1v1 uh, mid hero. It's the fact that not only do you have the dot damage coming off from it, but the fact that the Sned <laughs> ensures that you get 1, 2, 3 right clicks in, and with Queen of Pain hitting like a truck compared to the Murana, 62 plus 3 with that Null Talisman compared to 49 plus 3, considering the fact they have the exact same projectile speed. And it looks like over in the top lane, first blood has been spilled. DDY gets a bit too far forward, and that's the advantage of having that aggressive tri lane. I guess I must be still a little bit hungover from Hyde Street, so I did miss that first blood. I do apologize for that. Hopefully I won't be missing any more action. But Mule over in the mid lane having an absolute ball of a time. It looks like Snow. I've never seen them out lane this severely before. It really does come down to the hero matchup, since I'm very surprised they didn't go for that Viper pickup. Just because you do, I guess they wanted the global presence of the Murano. So they wanted more for the mid game. So that way, even if Snow does lose the uh, laning phase in terms of CS, uh, he'll at least be able to contribute more once the mid game rolls around. So Timber saw that point up in the reactive armor as well as that stout shield. Able to uh, regenerate a lot of the harassment that Zeki's dishing out. But keep in mind, Zeki with the boots, as well as the fact that he, has, he hits very hard over in the Nature's Prophet, is able to output a fair amount of DPS on him. So that stealth shield really and the reactive armor really mitigating a lot of damage. The reason why Timber Saw is an excellent 1v1 hero is even just having a single point up in that reactive armor essentially mitigates all the harassment that you take. And so Yoshi having that cheeky cyclone with the bird swinging around, forcing Wolfcut out of lane. Very aggressive ward placed by the Radiant team, so they want to catch out the Chen whenever he rotates. And one of the things you have to keep in mind with the Chen is he usually builds, uh, buys all the items for his team, so he's very poor. You see Poppy doing this a lot whenever Navi draft the Chen. Just because he doesn't actually need that many items to be the jungle. I mean, even just with a few clarities, he could jungle very effectively. And so he usually winds up picking up the uh, courier as well as the wards. It looks like he's eating a lot of harassment from that Stormcaller Harpy. And with that recent buff, so 5 seconds and 15 mana, it's much more efficient than the uh, Zeus Arc Light. He actually does a huge amount of damage. You see how much damage it's doing. DDY actually called out position. Where's that Chaos Ball? 2 second Chaos Ball. Wolf summoned by Flash, but that's nothing he can do. Uh, poison Touch drop. Wolf Cut might be taking a fall. Never mind. Shallow Grave keeping him alive. They're able to get a free kill up on DDY. Flash is chasing this. He wants that kill. Wolf Cut salving up to keep himself alive. Turns around for another Fade Ball. And looks like uh, Flash is overextending. He's going to be taking a fall. Demon Lord Satan goes on one more right click. And Wolf Cut just smacks him down. Yoshi, nothing he can do in this situation. Since the only creep he had taken was that Stormcaller, and that was excellent recognition coming up from 2IP, recognizing that Yoshi didn't have a, a uh, Ursa or a Centaur, or even the uh, Trolls, they weren't able to utilize any of their abilities. <laughs> and Wolf kind of, bit of smack talk coming up from him, saying, mate, I'm the real Wolf here. You see Snow utilizing the uh, Leap, the 0 0.1 uh, Windwalk that comes up from the Leap to disjoint into the Shadow Strike. Excellent recognition coming up from him, as it's one of the reasons why Miranda's okay against the Queen of Pain in the 1v1 matchup, it's just because of the fact that Shadow Strike does have a very slow uh, cut projectile speed. And so when you see it flying towards you, all you have to do is leap out. You can disjoint it, so nice the co-op wastes a lot of mana in doing that. We see Zeki uh, playing excellently on that Nature's Prophet, being able to draw the creep wave back just to deny Yoda experience. So he's able to constantly throw out right clicks. He looks like he's actually out CSing uh, Yoda. He's actually leaning the CS board. Very surprising. Zeki does this a lot in his Nature's Prophet. So here that he plays uh, fantastically. Yoshi's hanging around, wanting to go for, get a few retaliation kills. But it looks like the tri lane has been a complete success for 2IP. Flash, the, the issue with the Lycanthrope as a safe lane farmer is he offers zero laning presence. You've got the Wolves and you've got the right click power coming up from the Feral Impulse and the Hell. But that's really about it. Chaos Knight, when he provides the stun as well as the relocation ability coming up from the Reality Rift, offers you so much more uh, presence, and especially the fact that Chan Yoshi has been uh, playing fairly defensively. He's just picked up that center. They uh, troll. Don't waste time and so now he's able to provide a bit more offensive capability by trying to push down the wave. 
But Demon Lord Sona, with the extra levels he's picked up, that those two Shallow Graves he's thrown out uh, so far in the game really have ensured that the Trident was a success. Zeke's picked up his phase boot, so he's going to help with a lot more physical DPS. Now, boots up on Sanking, very significant, as well as the Headdress of Rejuvenation up on the Dazzle. The fact that, they have, that their supports have boots before uh, the Blink team supports do is a very significant deal, because it means that you'll, if you get caught out of position, you're going to eat the Chaos Bolt to the face, you're going to eat the Burrow Strike, and then the Poison Touch to finish you off. Uh, Chaos Knight, actually not as farmed as I thought he'd be, considering the fact that he's got two kills. He hasn't gotten as much CS as I would have liked, but he's been a lot more active. No so in terms right. of net worth, I suppose he must be about the same. Yeah, he's a bit, a little bit ahead of uh, Lycanthrope being played by Flash. We've got some excellent CSing coming out from Mule. He really has been controlling this mid lane. It's one of the things that's interesting to note about our 2AP's mid player is Mule, he's very safe and very consistent. He doesn't play risky. He's very calculated and methodical, and that gives you a huge advantage. The Yoshi takes a fall, was Sanking able to right-click him down. <laughs> Moonlight Shadow was popped by Snow, but just a little bit too late, and he takes a fall. That's that aggressive power coming out from the Chaos Knight. I guess teams such as Blink, they're not really used to playing against uh, aggressive early to mid-game carries. Since, so, since so far the ODR1's mostly been agility carries that dominated the board, so you see heroes like the Luna or the Nikes. But Nikes, everyone's played against Nikes enough times to know how to counteract them. You simply stay out of range. You ensure that if he does go for these early engagements, you right-click him down. Whereas when you're up against a hero such as Chaos Knight, which is very rarely seen, it does kind of shake you. Just because you're not used to playing against a hero, you kind of forget just how powerful he is in the early stages of the game, with, especially with the fact that uh, Chaos Bolt has been buffed. The fact that Reality Rift provides a huge amount of ganking presence because it also relocates you. So if it pushes you back closer towards uh, your supports, uh, towards the enemy supports, I mean, uh, it provides a lot more time and space for them to be able to deal those right clicks and to throw out those extra spells. So you have to keep in mind, Dazzle right clicks very hard. And Sanking, Burrow Strike is possibly one of the best non ultimate stuns in the game because it repositions the hero as well as providing a very strong stun in terms of damage as well as in the CC duration. So with that sandstorm as well, the fact that it's been buffed, so it has much uh, shorter duration, uh, much long shorter uh, intervals for to deal the damage. So before I think it was 0.01, now it's more like no, before 0.02, now it's 0.01. Arrow flies out, actually hits a creep. Embarrassing plays coming out from Snow, caught on camera, but never mind. He's been doing his best. While he hasn't has been losing significantly in terms of CS, he's been keeping up as best as he can. So he has gotten what CS he can. Looks like Yoshi, he's picked up a, a satire. Grouping up, Flash eats a 4 second stomp ball to the face, too easy, instantly hexed up by DUI, and then shackled, great recognition, too easy, actually takes a fall, Demon Lord saying, unable to get that shallow grave on, Paul throws it on Wolfgun, Wolfgun's extending a bit too far, Chakram comes out, Yoda's in for blood, Wolfgun turns around, throws another stomp ball, kills Flash, eats that blast to the face though from the satire, he might be taking a fall, Yoda's actually out of mana, turning around, right clicking DDY, forcing him back, his DDY doesn't have enough mana as well, and since he has boots, DDY doesn't, might actually be a kill, never mind, ZQ is teleported in, Yoda's caught up in the shackles and he's gonna be taking a fall. So two for one. Queen of Pain comes and never mind. Mule comes, he's gonna get one, he gets two with Yoshi. And he might actually be able to get three with Zeke fleeing for his life. Two easy's back and he misses that blind burrow strike. Actually tanks the tower. Caught in place with the sprout. Misplays coming up from two easy, bit unfortunate. And Mule being driven back by right clicks coming out from the creeps. Blinks out, dodges the star slum. Great rotations coming up from both teams. And Blink able to recover. Too easy. Mentioning some casual feats. Bottom tower is under attack. Bit unfortunate. I guess he underestimated the range of the tower, so he was tanking a lot of the tower hits during that. He should have ran back. And it looks like King Killer is just joining me. How are you doing, buddy? The Radiant's bottom tower has seen better days. <laughs> good shit, good shit. It's pretty rare to see. It uh, looks like 2IP have actually beaten uh, Blink's early game. The, the tri lane was a huge success. And Mule was heavily outlaned. Uh, sorry, Snow was heavily outlaned by Mule. So it's very surprising to see uh, Blink over in the back foot like this. Looks like Snow has disconnected. His computer has a few issues from time to time. But we could potentially be seeing an upset. It was uh, Queen of Pan up against the Murana. Yeah, I'm actually very surprised because... Uh, Blink had the fifth pick. They saw the Mirana pick up, and then they the Queen of Pain pick up, and then they chose Mirana. I was expecting them to pick up Viper, but instead they went with Mirana. So yeah, because Mule has been heavily out CSing our Snow, and with the fact that I guess because Blink drafted a very strong early push lineup, with the fact that Aghanim Scepter now has a a decrease in cooldown to forty seconds at all levels, I'm expecting Mule actually to probably rush that Aghanim Scepter. Just because you could use it to completely stop any push in its tracks. Just throw out the ult. Completely burn down the green wave. 
and then get your farm and try, try to take the game into the later stages just because Blink actually have a pretty bad late game lineup. It's very surprising considering the fact that the early game also has fallen apart. Yoshi Oban Chen hasn't really been able to accomplish all too much just because he's been caught out of position or every time he picks up a, a creep that he uses to control the lane, he gets jumped on by 2EZ as well as Demon Lord Satan. So I think they're kind of underestimating the power of that Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight isn't really getting any farm at the moment, but the Nature's Prophet getting that hand of Midas recipe is going to be make a pretty significant difference in the game. Yeah, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Zeke has been playing fantastically in the bottom lane. He was severely out CSing Yoda earlier on. Yoda, with those few kills, has able to start to pick up his uh, gold now, just because he has that chakra. <laughs> Too easy calling out Jamie, uh, otherwise known as Rafiki from Horseman the Ruckus, and think Sand King's his favorite hero. So he had a bit of a casual feat earlier. He sandstormed in front of a tower, got caught up by the sprout, and just died because he missed his bar strike. <laughs> bit embarrassing. But hey, it's a day after hide. I'm sure some of the players are still a little bit hungover. Uh, now, Salo isn't in this game, so too easy to actually replace them. <laughs> yeah, apparently him and Jamie were talking shit to each other as well. So I'm definitely gonna beat Blink Man. I got the, the bag. <laughs> Fuck him. Yeah, Jamie's been hearing some smack talk. He's walking out to join it. <laughs> I was kind of surprised. I was expecting my flat to be completely totaled, but no, nah, just a little bit messier than usual. <laughs> Yeah, it actually doesn't look too bad now. I think my flatmates did a bit of cleaning while I was combing out my girlfriends. <laughs> nice. And so noticing Yoda, he's actually gone for a very strange build over on Timbersaw. Two points up in all of his abilities. Usually you see either Max Out Welling Death or Max Out Timber Chain. Max Out Welling Death provides you more consistent DPS, since if you get that pure damage proc with the Welling Death, follow up the Chakram, easy kills. Whereas Maxing Out Timber Chain gives you... Uh, Superior damage in the long run, just because it has reduced cooldown and does 220 pure damage every time you get it. But it's a lot less it's a lot less reliable, because you have to land more than one timber chain. And so the fact that Yoda's gone for two in all these abilities, very strange build. How much does a mock cost? It'll be interesting to see how Blink choose to recover from this, because they're a team I've noticed, especially in the scrims, they don't really do well when they're playing from behind, especially with the fact that they tend to draft such strong early game lineups. If 2IP choose to uh, take a few towers, then just to secure their lead and take it to the late game, they actually can probably beat Blink at this stage, just because they've got such a superior uh, gold lead, as well as EXP lead. 500 EXP lead. Yeah, you do have to keep in mind Nature's Prophet, as well as the Lycanthrope. Especially in conjunction with the uh, Chan, so Chan can use the recall ability to send back. Yeah, Lycan throw it if he ever gets stove upon. And Lycan can always push down tower, shapeshift, and run the hell out. I think when we see the early um, Bloodstone off Yoda, it would be really good if he got a Boots of Travel. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. They definitely need to pick up a few Boots of Travel. Queen of Pain, also a very good Boots of Travel carry. It looks like he's going for Tread so far with the two Null Talismans. It's a very early game build. It's kind of reminiscent of a Dota 1 build for Queen of Pain, where you want to maximize your early game presence. Really would like to see an Agadim Scepter picked up on her, just because it enables her to shut down any push coming up from Blink completely cold, and later on when she picks up the Boots of Travels, whenever you see some Rat Dodo happening from Nature's Prophet, BOT into that lane, throw out the Sonic Wave, completely wipe out the Creep Wave, and then go back to whatever the hell you were doing. I think it would have been slightly more efficient for him if he'd um, just got one Null Talisman, then his magic stick, because now he's six slotted essentially. Yeah, that's true. That's another thing you have to keep in mind. Item slots are a premium. <laughs> that second null talisman giving a huge amount of uh, base damage to out CS that Mirana. There's almost a 30 damage point difference compared to the two. So 97 over in Queen of Pain compared to the 71 on the Mirana. So Snow hasn't really been able to accomplish all too much. He rotated over to the top lane to try to help out. But by the time he got there, all the action already had essentially ended. I still am kind of scratching my head at why they chose to pick up Mirana. I guess they wanted the global presence of the Moonlight Shadow. Just because Mirana as a mid-hero is pretty situational. It's completely contingent on how good your Mirana player is at landing those arrows. Just because of the fact that Mirana has very poor base damage. So Snow is finally reconnected. We should be good to go.
But yeah, Wolf Con. Right, we'll see. Oh, keep going. Pretty, uh, uh, pretty fine different than the gold XP. Obviously, just the jungle and his um, tiny gold advantage, and then he's only really a thousand gold. Radiance bottom tower is yeah, I'm actually very surprised at how small the lead is. I guess I gotta chalk that up to Yoshi as well as Aziki. Getting a lot of farm over in their respective roles. Error. <laughs> Mule blinks out. Nature's Prophet TPing in. Never mind, too easy. He came in to rotate just in case if Nature's Prophet started to get a bit cheeky. And Mule just barely able to survive. Over in the bottom lane, we see Zeke. Once he picks up his Midas. <laughs> He will be able to start generating a lot of gold for his team. Just because the fact that you've got that Wrath of Nature to delay pushes coming out from 2IP. Since 2IP, they've got the push presence coming out from a Chaos Knight, but that's really about it. Wolfgun's picked up his Drums of Endurance, so he's just going for a very early fighting build. Great pickup on him, just because the stats do propagate over to his DPS. Hey, it looks like Top's gonna rotate on to Demon Lord Satan. Yeah, definitely the hero you want to go for. Just because if you go a Wolf Khan, Demon Lord Saiyan can just throw out that Shadow Grab. Looks like he's getting called out of position. Shapeshift pops. So like Wolf Khan, he's just going to back away and TP on out of there. Actually, never mind. They're turning around on Wolf Khan. Wolf Khan's called out of position. He uses a reload, the Reality Rift to relocate himself out of position. Yoda clears out the trees. Moonlight Shadow running a huge advantage, but Sentry will instantly drop. Mule's coming in. Actually, eats a nuke to the face. Blinks back out. Shadow Grab pops prematurely. Yoda gets a kill over on Lycan Throw. DDY fleeing for his life. He's out of mana. Hand the money over on Nature's Prophet in the bottom lane, so he's going for them right over in the meanwhile. Is under attack. And Wolf can't instantly TP's back long, so he's going to get as much free farm as he can. He actually might be able to get a kill. Never mind, he's juked out. And Z keeps throwing off some jukes a hazard. I feel sad for keeps them. himself alive from Wolf can't. Usually when you go on a hero at that kind of range, you want to use Reality Rift, just because it has a faster cast point. The fact that it relocates you as well, so it's more difficult for them to be able to juke you out when that's happening. Run and picks up a regeneration rune. But yeah, one for nothing trade over in the top lane. Very surprising how well that went for 2IP, considering the fact that it effectively pincered off Demon Lord Satan and uh, Wolfkind. Wolfkind was trapped on his own. And Demon Lord Satan was initially caught out of position. I guess a bit of miscommunication. DDY was able to throw out the shackles before any of that happened, or the hex. Could have ended completely differently. Yeah, Shallow Grave is absolutely phenomenal, just because it scales in all stages of the game. Wolf can eat a lot of damage, throws out a Chaos Spot, 4 second Chaos Spot, Zeke eats a stun, all flies over in DDY, caught out in the re Reality Rift, and smacked down. Blink Dota on the back foot, it looks like 2IP might be going for an upset here, they're beating Blink at their own game. With a surprise Queen of Pain, as well as a surprise uh, Chaos Knight pick. Denied. In the middle lane, Snow with his face boots, he's able to uh, get some CS where he can. But he, so far, he hasn't really been able to contribute to his other two lanes. Whereas the Queen of Pain has been utilizing her mobility. Every time her ultimate's off cooldown, she's going in for engagements. Great ult coming out from her. Tower is under attack. Run, little bottom tower. Run. This stage, the uh, downfall of Blink might just be the lack of reliable stuns. Yeah, definitely. Blink are a team that really don't like to draft reliable stuns. That's something I've noticed from them. In this case, they've got DDY. He's their only reliable stunner. Just because he has the Hex as well as the Shackle. But the fact that Shadow Shaman is a very greedy support here. He needs a lot of levels as well as gold in order to be effective. Just because he chews through so much mana with his Aether Shock. You want Arcane Boots up on him. And then you want to Blink Dagger since he's a very slow hero. The fact that he's been having such a difficult game. He's 0 for 4 right now. And the fact that you've got so many ways to either break his shackle or to keep the enemy hero alive if they do get uh, initiated upon with that Shallow Grave. It really shuts down the effectiveness of Shadow Shaman. But they're grouping up for a push now. They're going to drop Mass Serpent once for this. And yeah, they should be able to take a free tail one. Fortification is popped. But I don't really know how effective that will be. Mirana going in for the double damage rune. Four seconds stun coming up from Wolf Gun. He's going to turn around. Start beating on Snow. Snow pops the Moonlight Shadow. Called out the Reality Rift. Actually might be taking a fall. And with that scream coming out from Mule, who blinked and instantly, Snow taking a fall. Great plays coming out from 2IP. It's surprising seeing how easily they're falling apart right now. They do take that free tail one over at the top lane. So with the gold coming in from that, and with Zeke uh, split pushing the bottom lane, they might be able to take out the bot lane before... Th the IP has to respond. Has seen better days. Looks like Nature's Prophet's going for the Necro Book build, so Staff of Wizardry up on him. Lycanthrope most likely will be going for that as well. He's picked up his Vladimir's, very delayed. Probably wants to ideally pick up a Medallion of Courage to maximize his DPS and farming. But with the fact that he's had such a poor start, probably will be going for the Necro Book. 
And Demon Lord Satan, is he able to get that tonight? Never mind, he hesitates and feeds a free tower over to in love. the dire side. Bit embarrassing, but what can you do? I think uh, tactically, Wolfkind should really pick up his treads before his arm run. Yeah, Treads does provide so much over the Chaos Knight. Just because of the strength hero, he's got very low Dyer's attack speed compared to agility attack. carries. Oh, that's got to hurt. Smoke of Deceit. Uh, picked up by the Radiant side, so they have to be aware of the Dyer's fact that Lightning Throw can solo Roshan at any time. Without the Medallion of Courage, though, it's significantly delayed. But I think Yoshi, no, no, Yoshi's going towards attack. that mechanism. He's about 300 that's gold off it. Hold. Once Blink pick up their uh, mech, they can start taking these engagements just because they've got that burst heal, which will mitigate a lot of damage coming off from the Queen of Pain. But the fact that Queen of Pain's hit le level 11 very early onto the game, huge amount of team fight presence just because she can burst people down. And you've got the Trouble Trap into the arrow, into the Shackle. Starstorm actually missed from Snow. He was out of range for that, but they're able to finally seal the deal over on, on Mule. And Shadow Shaman gets a much needed influx of gold. Not yeah, a bit of a pity Sal's not playing. I don't know what's up with him. And Shadow Shaman, he's about 1.4k off his Blink Tiger. Since once Yoshi picks up the mech, he'll be on ward duty. About 50 gold away from his mech. So Blink Dota, they'll be to start getting their huge teamfight items up. Nature's Prophet about almost has his Necro Book 1. So that'll be a huge difference. Radiance top tower is under attack. Yeah, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Every time it's off cooldown, it's basically a free tower. The cooldown never seems as long as it actually is, just the fact that it's up for such a long time. Regeneration room only with the bottom lane. By the time the wards have run out, you know, it's only about a minute. Yeah, it's kind of similar to the Death Prophet Exorcism, just because it's up for such a long time. While the cooldown is technically long, it just doesn't it doesn't really feel that long. Arrow flying out from snow. Regeneration room scout out. We see some ancient stacking happening over for the die. This is something two IP really haven't been utilizing, just because they don't have any effective ways to clear out that ancient stack. Chaos Knight only can right click one creep at a time. And so that's one of the ways that uh, Blink Dota can get back into this game by ancient stacking and trying to get as much GPM as possible for Flash. Since Flash, yeah, he looks like he's going for that Necro Book Rush. So they'll have that two Necro Books out very shortly. Arrow flies out, finding a bit of reconnaissance, attacked. misses, Wolf can't wisely backs away. And that looks like a free tier one mid tower. Like Blink Dota rotating to try and defend this. But Wolf, Wolf can't also no rotating over. It'll be 5v3. Just to the fact that Lycanthrope like can't really go in these early teamfight engagements, and neither can the Nature's Prophet. He can come in for some TP support. That's about it. Yoda actually called out with the uh, Troll Trap. Mule eats an arrow to the face. Shallow, Shallow Grey pop very early, but pops up the screen as well as the Sonic Web dealing a lot of damage. Where's that follow up? Too easy. He's sitting around that sandstorm. So far, Mule's the only one taking the fall. Wolfgang throws it to start over on Snow. Four second Chaos Ball coming up from him once again. Well, that Rally Rift seals the deal over on her. Yoda takes the. Actually, he's able to kill one. Caught a bit out of position with that shackle. He could be taking a fall. Wolf Cunt hanging around in the back end. Too easy feed, but buys back. He's TPing in to be the pro. A bit more support, but Wolf Cunt able to get another kill. Ends another spree as well. Huge amount of gold over him. Barra Strike coming up from Too Easy. Pinstring Flash in place. And Wolf Cunt with a triple kill. Smacking down Flash, saying, Bitch, get away from my hero. I'm the only wolf here. Yeah, that buyback, as well as that surprise bar strike coming out from him, completely caught Flash by surprise, was able to get another kill, so Yoshi, the only one that survived, that mechanism was the well as the hand of God, keeping them alive through that sonic wave as well as the scream, otherwise it would have been a burst down two heroes off the bat, which is what Queen of Pain excels in, Easy actually almost gets caught up by an arrow, never mind, backs out just in time, treads as well as armor, yeah, picked up, <laughs> I think you have to keep in mind the Chaos Knight is he actually gets more DPS from building strength than from actually just building pure damage. So Harder Tarask is actually the most cost-efficient DPS item on him. Just because the fact that Phantasm uh, images do uh, pure the exact same amount of damage as your hero, but it's based off base damage. So getting more strength not only means they're a lot tankier, so they're harder to bring down. It also means they actually provide a shit ton more damage. Especially when you keep in mind that Reality Rift provides 100 extra damage for you and all your images. Shadow, Shackle followed by the uh, Star Storm. Double Star Storm, where's the arrow? Arrow actually whiffs, Zeke comes with that sprout. Wolf can't call way the position, but the rest of his team's rotating in. Rarely Rift's actually repositioning himself to safety. Great play coming out from Wolf can't. One man Barra Strike coming out from Yoshi, turns around, throws out Barra Strike, gets a kill. Yoda comes in, cleans up Snow. Wolf can't standing his ground, saying, Get back, motherfucker, you don't know me like that. Snow's fleeing for his life right now. Wolf can't's waiting until he's off cooldown, he actually eats a point black arrow to the face. 
Shallow Grove keeping on. Never mind, he eats that Star Storm. Great play coming out from Snow, throwing out that arrow before he could throw out the Chaos Bolt. Too easy to copy a lot of damage, but he's going to follow up with that bar Strike. And Mule just screams, gets a double kill. Amazing plays coming out from 2IP. Mule able to dance around about 100 HP. Flash comes, shows up late to the party, he didn't really get the memo. But he's got his Necro Book 1 up on him. But, yeah, amazing clutch plays coming out from... Our wolf Khan was able to keep himself alive for such a long time just by using that rarely rift as well as uh, some armlet toggling. Turn around and gets a kill over on Snow, so even though he did take a fall to that star storm, tower is under attack. makes it, it a no very difficult trade. Itself. And with the superior early game from 2AP right now, they're shutting down uh, Bleak's death ball push cold. Timbersaw is very close to his uh, bloodstone. Mule actually might even arrow to the face. Yeah, he... with that ether shock and with that star storm takes a fall. But he's about 900 gold off his Aghanim Scepter. If he gets that Aghanim Scepter, he can completely shut down any push coming out from Team Blink. But at the same time, the fact that the Necro uh, Book Warrior does that, has that last one and you kill it, that Aghanim Scepter upgrade could turn to be Queen of Pain's downfall, since if she throws out that ultimate and kills uh, both the Necro minions coming out from uh, DD, uh, from Z as well as from Flash, that pure damage could be enough to steal the deal. Arrow flies out for only best reconnaissance. Demon Lord's in hanging back. In Fortification place. pop to try to buy them some time. So they looks like they're trying to defend this. Just because they know they're blink dirty, they have to fight 3v5, or at least 4v5, just because they want Flash to get as much gold as possible. And Nexus Prophet's usually rat dirty. He can TP in. But at the moment, all he's providing right now is a few right clicks. Arrow flies out. They're going for a nice. Never mind. Shadow Shaman's able to seal the deal with the Serpent Wards. Easy eating a lot of damage from those wards. They do a crap ton of physical DPS, as well as some minor splash. That's something you have to keep in mind. But they're going to farm those wards now, get what gold they can. And in terms of a golden EXP difference, so far for EXP, 5,000 EXP Radius in favor of 2 IP. Very attack. significant, especially when you're against such a, a strong early game push lineup coming out from Blink. Having the EXP lead makes it a lot easier for you to be able to defend these pushes and then win these fights. But only a 1,000 gold lead, so Blink Dota with the tower gold. Radiance top tower and with the Nexus Prophet able to get so much gold, they actually are keeping pretty even in terms of gold. It's a very negligible difference for them. Drums are in doing up by the Mirana. So it looks like she's going for a pretty uh, mid-game oriented build. Probably will be picking up something like a Maelstrom. Or even a Value Yasha as the next big item. Yoshi over in the jungle with that stack with the stacking. And clearing at camps. Has been finding a lot of gold. And DDY just picked up his Blink Dagger. So while we're talking about Blink having a lack of reliable uh, lockdown. Having a Blink Dagger on Shadow Shaman does provide them that huge initiation power. So you can jump in, hex one, shackle the other. But instant Blink Dagger picked up by the Sand King. I think this is a much more important deal. Let's get Sand King with his Bar Strike. Can lock down. Two, three heroes at once, and then follow up the epicenter. Yeah. The most important item for Blink to get at the moment is a smoke, so that Lycan can get Rush. Yeah, eight minutes overdue. Yeah, that's definitely true. Especially with the fact that you have a Chen as well as a Shadow Shaman, so you can use the Mass Serpent once to clear Roshan out. You have Lycan throw it with a Vladimir's, but I think they're just afraid of the team fight presence coming out from Two IP. they missed the wards. There it is. Two dropping. <laughs> Flash hanging around, sending out his wolves to move the reconnaissance over in Wolfcut. But Wolfcut turns around and starts beating on his wolves. He looks like he's going for a BKB as his next big item. Very good pickup on Chaos Knight. I think they don't realize that sentries see through smoke. Oh no, I think with smoke of the seas being changed, so you actually can't see them at all now. Unless they're broken. Oh, really? Yeah, Yoshi was telling me about this earlier. I think it must have been the recent patch, because I don't remember reading this in earlier change logs. But until that uh, tier 1 mid's been broken, Bleak do have a lot of control over the map. Casual rally rift, and with that crit, Flash loses about a third of his life from one uh, Chaos Strike. Looks like the tier 1 mid might be taken forward. Reconnaissance error flies up through the trees. Scout out any, uh, anyone hiding there. Allies. With the Blink Dagger over into easy. Actually, Moonlight Shadow Pop looks like they want to defend this. Wrath of Nature flying through. <laughs> DDY blinks then, throws out the hex over on Mule. Mule's caught up with the Shadow Grave Toys. Gonna keep him alive. Easy with the Epicenter. Bar Strike catches out too. Still catching a lot of damage. Sam's to keep himself alive. Mule somehow surviving through all of that. Never mind, he died but bought back. Yoda secures a kill over on the stone. Turns around. Might be the kill Flash. Never mind, Flash bites him down. Easy is out for blood. Blinks, get that bar strike, might be able to get a kill over in Flash with the negative armor from Weave, and easy with the triple kill, single-handedly turning the fight around for 2 IP. Jamie, you got nothing on this, he's calling you out. Mule going over at Zeke, but Zeke just TPs back home, and over the top lane, Wolfcunt, who wasn't even present in that fight, just takes a free tower. Great players coming out from 2 IP, as well as Blink, 
No recognition coming out from DD White and jump in, Ish instantly initiate on the Queen of Pain with the Serpent Wards dropped defensively. That Shallow Grave, however, did keep uh, Mule alive for a very long time. But in terms of CS, we see that Nature's Prophet and the Lycanthrope actually are starting to pull ahead. But in terms of net worth, Nature's Prophet's the only one that's uh, keeping ahead for Blink. We see all three cores over in 2IP, the Chaos Knight, the Timbersaw, as well as the Queen of Pain, much further ahead. Double damage ruin spawning over in the top lane. Looks like Blink Dota grouping up for a smoke, four man smoke coming up from them. The Moonlight Shadows coming up from Snow haven't really given them as much initiation power as I'd like, just because the fact that Demon Lord Satan has been very on point with the sentries. The instant he sees the Moonlight Shadow pop, he always drops sentries. This is one of the things you have to keep in mind, Mirana, is when you're playing against the supports, always have to constantly be alert. Looks like Mule actually might run into the smoke gank. This could be disastrous for 2IP. Oh, never mind. Mule's greed actually keeps himself alive. And Blink completely run past Mule. That would have been a huge pickup if they were able to kill Mule. Mule, he's been... Too easy. Yeah, they kill Zeke in the backhand. He pops the Necro 3, though. Shadow Grave coming out. Shadow uh, Word coming out from uh, Demon Lord's hand. Keeping his teammates alive. A lot of damage happening on him. We've popped. Wolf Cut chasing down uh, Yoshi. <laughs> Yoshi actually turns around. Gets a kill over on uh, Demon Lord's hand, but instantly dies to Yoda. With that chakram, DDY fleeing for his life, turns easy into a chicken, fleeing back, and actually able to blink out. Great plays coming out from DDY, and the serpent was providing a lot of space to enable the rest of his teammates to retreat. Wolf Gun to start smacking down, he activates his armor. Arrow flies almost hits Wolf Gun. He's able to matrix dodge that in time. Great micro coming out from uh, Yoshi, who was able to get a centaur stomp as well as the Ursa clap on three. Dial's then turns around, able to instantly kill uh, Demon Lord Satan with that new coming out from Chancellor. That's 200 to 400, so fair amount of damage. Yoda looks like he's going to farm up that wave. He has to keep in mind the uh, last word coming out from the Necro book. Yeah, he eats that damage to the face. But the fact that Necro uh, images actually give you 200 gold each time you kill them now, very significant nerf on them. You actually can farm up the Necro book uh, minions just so you can farm up the Mass Open Wards. And Mule, 25 minute uh, Aghanim Scepter picked up. He's almost hit level 16. So a level 3 upgraded Sonic Wave. That's going to be absolutely horrific coming up from 2 IP. Yeah, 725 magic damage is going to hit at least 3-4 heat people with a 40 second cooldown. Blink Dota, they've, they've lost their window of opportunity to be able to go for that death ball push. So it looks like 2IP, they're going to be able to take it late just with the space that you could provide with the Queen of Pain uh, upgraded ult since you can use it to clear out any creep wave. And it looks like Easy is building that Veil of Discord, so that's only going to increase the damage further. He's actually chosen to go for stats over Caustic Finale, a bit surprising, I guess since he's recognizing that he's not going for Arcane Boots, since he's going for- since he went for that naked uh, Blink Rush, going for stats actually is more beneficial in this case. Since it provides you the stats you need to be able to get off more than one Burrow Strike, and that's Sand King's biggest weakness in the early stages of the game, he's completely limited by his mana pool. Mechanism pop, Demon Lord Sand did pick up his mech during that fight. He hasn't popped us yet, so it looks like Yoshi was the one that popped it. And they're grouping up for a push. Well, it's happening, we see Zeke instantly going over to the top lane, so he's going to try to do some Rat Dota right, while he can. Tower. Necro 3 up on him, so he's going to create a lot of space for his team with that Rat Dota. Mass Open wants dropped defensively, Wolf Gun goes and instantly pops DDY, just smacking him down with the armlet. Sonic Wave kills off Yoshi, Snow with that double damage rinse hanging out in the backhand. Too easy kept alive, that Shallow Grave, Flash caught out of position. Eats that really rough to the face, where's that Blink? Never mind, Mule's able to seal the deal with what looked like the Shadow Strike. Arrow flies out, actually catches too easy in the face. He's gonna eat a centaur stomp as well. Never mind, Mule's able to kill off the centaur with a scream. Eats that last word from the Necrobook minion. That's another 200 gold going in favor of them. But while that's happening, over in the top lane, Rat Dota, it looks like a Nature Prophet able to take a tower. So they lose three and a mid tower from the look of it in exchange for a tier one top. But never mind, looks like the push from 2IP actually has been broken just because they are fairly low. And Mule has burned through all his mana. So the mid tower for Blink gets to live another day, and they're going to try to wrap out of their way towards uh, Rex, just because that's the only way they can uh, to try to turn this game around. Just because in terms of team fights, right now they can't fight 5v5 up against 2IP. Their team fight's much better over on 2IP, especially with the uh, Blink epicenter coming out from the Sand King, as well as the Sonic Wave. They're out DPSing uh, the heals coming out from Chen, and the fact that they have such squishy heroes, Flash is the only one that could be sustain a lot of damage. But even then, he's been dropping like a sack of potatoes once he eats all the nukes coming up from 2IP. With that pure damage as well as the Welling Death from Timbersaw. Yoda picks up a Blade Mail, so excellent way to counteract a lot of the 
uh, AoE magic damage coming out from Blink Dota. The Ether Shock as well, so Star Storm. You're returning a fair amount of damage. Actually, if you kill a Necrobug minion with Blade Mail on, does it return the damage to the... Oh no, or does it return it to the minion? Oh, okay. Right. Because if you could return the last word damage with the blade mail, that would be sick. <laughs> yeah, I think we're about to see a veil of discord up on the sand king, which is going to be a pretty clutch pickup, I think. Yeah, it's a very underrated item in, pub, in pubs as well as in competitive games. It actually cr provides a huge increase in your uh, team's DPS, especially if you consider the fact that they have such they have two huge magical AoE spells. You've got the epicenter, which a veil of discord actually provides more damage than the items have to upgrade. And you've got the Aghanim upgraded uh, Sonic Wave coming up from Queen of Pain. Veil of Discord picked up. But while it's happening, to top Jesus. and bottom lane. Ziki, as well as Snow, doing a bit of split pushing. But with that Phantasm pop by Wolfcard, they're grouping up for this. He's got a fresh 10 second BKB. He's itching to pop there. Wolfcard's the carry player that likes to get right in the thick of it. That Shadow World keeping him alive. Chakram flies out. Dust has been popped preemptively. Yoshi's called out the Veil of Discord, so he's gonna back away. He doesn't want to eat that Sonic Wave to the face. Looks like they're gonna lose a tier 1 to bottom lane, but they're gonna lose their racks. Blink Dota falling apart, so the aggression coming up from 2IP. The fact that the early game coming up from 2IP was superior. Very rare to see Blink on the back foot, especially when you're trying to execute a timing push strat. But while that's happening, Ziki niggling away at tier 3. Instant rotation coming up from Yoda with the boots of travel. And while it's happening in the mid lane, looks like some engagement. DD1 comes and catches out Wolfcut. Wolfcut's caught up with his shackles. No Demon Lord Satan, but we've got some one-man initiation coming up from Too Easy, says I'm a one-man army. Pops the uh, Veil of Discord, got, pops the Epicenter, blinks in, Demon Lord Satan might be taking a fall. Yeah, he dies right before he TPs out, but he buys easy enough to, uh, to TP out, so they lose two. But, yeah, good recognition coming up from him. Demon Lord Satan saying, hey, I screwed up, take me instead. Yeah, someone's always going to do it. Bit unfortunate he wasn't able to get that Shallow Grave off over on Chaos Knight. But it looks like they're finally groping up for a Roshan, so this could be the critical moment. <laughs> Lycanthrop sitting pretty flash on cash, got 2.1k, so about 2.31 for that Roshan kill. 10,000 EXP lead in favor of 2IP, this is a very significant factor, just because it means your supports have been grossly outleveled, and 5,000 gold lead, the gold lead isn't quite as significant, considering the amount of buybacks coming out from 2IP. The Queen of Pain, very close to a, a Sheepstick, so having a Queen of Pain with the Aghanim Scepter as well as a Sheepstick, huge factor in these fights, especially since once she has that Sheepstick as well, Queen of Pain can start building towards something like an Aya Scardi, a BKB, and start transitioning to that DPS role. Oshan has fallen to the Dyer. Impressive. Kind of surprised they chose to give Flash the uh, Aegis the Immortal. I would have preferred actually to see it on Zeki, just because he's the one that's been doing these split pushes. Bottom tower is under attack. Run, little bottom tower. Run. That's true. Yeah, it looks like he's going right towards that Sheepstick, so he knows that they're going to be taking the game into the later stages. Like in City, about 2.5k. Interesting to see what items he chooses to go for. I would like to see a BKB up on him. Just because the amount of magical damage coming out from 2IP is what's been decimating these fights. With a BKB, he still can't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wolfcut, but he won't instantly die at the start of these fights when he eats the Epicenter as well as the Sonic Wave to the face. BKB up on Moranus, they're recognizing that with the Aghanim pick Scepter uh, pick up for Quap as her first big item, a lot of their damage is coming out from that magic damage, especially when you consider the uh, Veil of Discord uh, Epicenter. So with the Sheepstick up, I think Blink actually have a superior team fight right now than 2IP, so I've got a very small window of opportunity. Arrow flying out from Snow. Almost catches uh, Wolfcut in the face, as well as Demon Lord Satan, but that range creep tanks it, and gods, the looks like they're actually backing away. The they let them take the tier 1 in the bomb lane, uh, the tier 2 in the bomb lane. Easy, fantastic initiation coming up from him. He's hanging around, waiting the wings, so he wants uh, Blink to initiate, just so he can channel that epicenter, Blink in with that bar strike, and catch him by surprise. But while that's happening, Nature's Prophet minions in the top lane, doing a lot of split pushing. But with one Rax down, Blink already on the back foot. With two Raxes, that really will seal the deal. Phantasm popped by Wolfgun preemptively, so he's providing a huge amount of pushing power on his own. This is the reason why Chaos Knight used to be picked up as a carry back in the Dota 1 TI, post TI, uh, pre TI one days. Fail of Discord popped over on three. BKB popped. Shadow of Grave over on Yoda, keeping him alive. Easy right in the thick of it. He's actually caught that position down. Might actually be taking a fall. Flash died, but Aegis the Immortal is going to keep him alive again. However, he did use Shapeshift. Yoshi gets smacked down by Wolfcut. Wolfcut might be taking a fall. Pops the magic stick charges. 
Going in for a kill over on DDY. Mule able to kill uh, Snow in the background. One shot. DDY with a crit takes the fall, but is able to uh, kill two. So they lose one of their cores in exchange for court and support. So pretty even trade, but they're able to do a lot of damage over on the top lane, as well as burn off the Aegis. But the creep wave push coming out from Nature's Prophet with his uh, Call of Nature actually able to do a lot of damage over in that tier 3, so they're just going to chip away at it. Yeah, Manta Style over on Chaos Knight. Once he picks up a harder Taras, he just will be a one-man army on his own. With the 4 from the Phantasm, as well as the 2 from Manta, that's 7 Chaos Knights beating on your door. Rarely worth providing, it gives 100 damage to each of those illusions. Manta Style is a huge DPS pickup for the Chaos Knight. Since right now, the only reliable way that they have to clear out the CK images is the Star Storm coming up from Rana. Which is very delayed as well as the Ether Shock, but Ether Shock I think only bounces to about nine, you know, seven units. And so if you're bouncing off all the CK images, you're not hitting the rest of his team. And so Chaos Knight's very happy with that, since his illusions are pretty far and forget. Mule has a sheep stick up now, so if he could actually get a great blink initiation over on Snow, or over in the Nature's Prophet, or Flash before they could get their BKBs off, can quickly turn the fight. Lycan, he's just been saving his gold, 4k up on him, and he's finally picked up his BKB. Could be a watershed moment that can kill it. Blink Dota having their first loss over in the ODL1. I guess there's a bit of uh, pride coming out from you guys. You <laughs> Horseman the Ruckus want to be the first team to beat Blink. But it looks like 2IP beat you to it. Especially as you have to keep in mind, uh, loser's bracket is actually best of one. So if Blink actually loses the next game over in the loser bracket, they actually can, will be eliminated from the ODL1. That's something you have to keep in mind. Looks like Asno, oh, he almost went for a career snipe. Yeah, with the fact that the uh, best of three series have all been delayed so far, this is the first best of three series. And we've got the finals coming in about two weeks. Henry has decided that uh, the loser bracket will just be best of one. So if Blink, Dota actually do lose a series, and then get, they could actually get knocked out of the ODL1. So we'll see how it goes. Wolfcon, Poppy, Mantisol, and Phantasm, 7 CKs knocking on your door. Mass Serpent Wards instantly mean dropped, Weave defensively popped, the Lycan Throat pops his BKB, runs up, face tech, he's going to do as much damage on too easy, very good play coming up from Flash, as it means too easy isn't able to get off his uh, episode during that fight, Wolfcon actually disjointed his uh, Rally Ripper, gets it over in Snow, smacks him down, Lycan Throat doing what Lycan does best, chasing away the supports and just tearing through the back line. Demon Lord standing, fleeing throws like juking through the threes, but while that happens, tier three, as well as the racks over in the bottom lane falls. I think Mule actually missed this ult on everybody. DDY survived that. Bit embarrassing coming up from him, but whatever, they're able to take two racks. And Mule's able to blink as well now there, so they lose two for one, and as well as uh, racks. So keep in mind the fact that Lycanthrope uh, was able to take down too easy uh, before he could get his epicenter off meant they mitigate a huge amount of damage. Great recognition coming out from Flash. Not too sure why too easy didn't blink out a runaway earlier, just because he knew that with the Necro 3 uh, minions up, he can actually has true sight. So I don't know why he was standing there in the sandstorm. But regardless, great recognition coming out from Flash to try to keep his team in that game. And Wolfcon, he's reached that point of critical mass. He's gonna be building towards that harder Taraskin. He hasn't died in the last 10, 15 minutes just because he's so freaking tanky. As well as the fact you've got the Shallow Grave and the Weave coming out from Dazzle to keep him alive on top of that. The big bad wolf is knocking on your door. Saying, little piggy, little piggy, let me in. Nature's Prophet going for a BKB of his own. Shiva's Guard picked up on Timbersaw as well as the uh, Jam and True Sides. They're going to use that to wrest map control away from Blink. Just because they know that they're really far ahead now. So all they have to do is further their lead. This Mirana pickup coming out from Snow really hasn't been all that effective. The issue with Mirana, especially as one of your uh, core DPSs, is she needs a huge amount of gold before she becomes relevant in terms of right clicking power. Just because of the fact that you usually want to pick up Manta Style and then another big item. That's when she starts to output a fair amount of DPS. So the fact that she's been pigeonholed to going for that BKB. You do have the damage coming up from the Hell, as well as the Vladimir's offering. So that's nice, but right now she can't, she's barely scratching Wolf Cunt. Especially with that weave. Yeah, just because Mirana, you usually rely on the fact that you're a very elusive hero with that leap as well as the Moonlight Shadow. And the fact that you have such a huge initiation range from your arrow, is you never want to engage until you know you have the upper hand. 
That smoke gang coming up from uh, Blink. It looks like 2AP actually blink, pop that smoke as well, bit awkward, too easy, instantly being pinged out, they want to lock him down before he can get that epicenter off, he's turned into a chicken from DDY, great recognition, but one at a time, Shadow Grave keeping alive, massive open wards drop, Snow copying a lot of damage from that rarely rip, Mule over the killer here at the back end, he's fleeing for his life now from Flash, Flash to turn over into shapeshift form, but he caught out that rarely rip, Chaos Bolt hits him, 4 seconds done, how many 4 seconds done to CK got in this game? He needs to buy a lottery ticket, and GG caught by Blink. Blink Dodo losing their first game in the ODL 1 from fantastic game played by a 2IP. Top is missing. Radiant victory. And that looks like we're moving into game number 2. So if they lose the next game, Blink Dodo will actually be pushed down to the loser's bracket. So it's a sad day for Blink fans, and a great day for everybody else. David has been in Goliath, so we're just going to be taking a quick pause and moving on to game number 2. Any final thoughts on the game there, King Killer? Uh, any final thoughts on the game? Yeah, I think the the drafts were just in the direction of two IP. Blink just going for a classic pushing strat, which I like to think counted mm. by good team play. Yeah, it's just showing you the weaknesses of Blink's draft. They drafted an entirely all push lineup, and then they had that Mirana pickup for mid, which I really don't understand. I would have felt like a hero such as even an Elt will destroy it, or a Viper would have done better. Just because the fact that you can shut down that Queen of Pain, she is very easy to beat in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So the fact they chose Mirana, a bit of overconfidence coming out from Blink, and that was punished with some amazing play coming out from Mule. So we're just going to take a quick break and move on to game number two. King Killer, will you be co-casting me for that one as well? Um, what's Jamie up to? Um, he's just sitting around playing Hearthstone right now. Okay. Well, potentially, I'll join you in the lobby anyway. Alrighty, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Thanks, 